So hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. Now I've been riding this bike a little bit recently, not to change my mind about titanium, but more just to confirm what I'd suspected about it. And I want to make this video basically just to tell you some proper truths about titanium as a material. And is it as good as it's hyped up to be by the cycling media? The short answer is no. Is it buttery smooth, majestic ride quality? low vibration, magic carpet ride, no. Why not? The stiffness and the inverse of stiffness, so the compliance, the flex, the comfort, which is basically just comes from stiffness, is governed, as with all bike frames, by two things, Young's Modulus and Second Moment of Area. Now, if you haven't seen my videos on Young's Modulus and Second Moment of Area, I've got one on each. Young's Modulus is an inherent material stiffness property, and second moment of area comes from the shape geometry of the tube, so the diameter and the wall thickness. And those are the only two things which govern stiffness, compliance, comfort, flex, whatever you want to call it. There's nothing else magical going on with any bike frames. Now, people often say that titanium is buttery smooth, blah, 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 flattens out the bumps. Well, I can tell you, it's just probably flex. What I'm about to say <laughs> might, might offend you if you think titanium is a wonder material, but if you take into account something called specific modulus, which is the stiffness to weight ratio, so you take the stiffness in gigapascals and you divide it by the density, which is essentially the weight. If you had two frames that built up to a bike like this, this bike weighs 8.5 kilos, and you had one titanium frame and one aluminium frame and both bikes weighed 8.5 kilos, I can tell you the stiffness, so ride quality, compliance, flex, comfort, or stiffness, pedaling stiffness, blah, 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 will be almost exactly the same because the specific modulus of aluminium and titanium are almost the same. It's about 25, 26. So titanium is stiffer, but it's heavier. Aluminium is less stiff, around 72 gigapascals, but it's much lighter, it's got a lower density. But those two figures divided by each other give you the same figure, about 20, 25, 26 for aluminium and titanium. So if you have two frames that weigh the same, they are going to be the same stiffness, whether it's uh, aluminium or titanium. More or less, the titanium tubes are more, you're more regimented in what shape shapes you can choose for the tubes whereas aluminium can be more easily hydroformed into more complex shapes so you can get better shape geometry and shape stiffness so second moment of area with aluminium but if you took basically the two similar tube profiles same frame weight that built a bike the same weight 8.5 kilos the comfort compliance flex stiffness whatever you want to call it aluminium and titanium are going to be exactly the same the comfort you'll feel comes from the wheels, the flex in the wheels, the tyre choice, tyre pressure, and mainly the seat post. And I can say most of the comfort in this bike comes out the seat post. And it's the same with all bikes because the double diamond shape is basically a very stiff truss. It's thousands of times stiffer than the single cantilever beam, which is the seat post. If you're gonna be marketed to, to buy a titanium bike, ignore the bullshit that says I fucking can. That's what I think of aluminium. So if you are going to be marketed to to buy a titanium bike, and I'm not against titanium, I like I like it as a material. Um, ignore the bullshit about it being a magic carpet ride and compliant and buttery smooth, and be sold on the virtues of basically a much higher fatigue life, and better aesthetics than aluminium, and zero basically zero corrosion. And those are the virtues you should be buying a titanium bike on not the fact that uh, it's got some mythical ride qualities because frame stiffness or comfort comes from EI, Young's Modulus times second moment of area. And it's the same with vibrations. Another argument is that people say, well, titanium seems to iron out high buzz vibrations or high frequency vibrations in the road. Well, again, that's bullshit because vibrations in anything, in any structure, uh, if you go and look up, go and look up the equation for, <laughs> for beam vibration, you'll see that it's a function, again, of stiffness and mass. And like we said, if you've got uh, the frame same mass, so let's say the frame and the bike, the same build weighs 8.5 kilos, whether it's titanium or aluminium, and that's a good assumption. Like I could build this bike up with a CAD 13 frame and pretty much come out exactly the same weight. And if you do the specific modulus calc again, so the Young's modulus of titanium divided by the density and do that for aluminium, we'll find 
the specific modulus is about 25, like I said, for both. So you can say, okay, the ultimate stiffness of the frames are the same. If the mass is the same, their fundamental frequency, so the first frequency that they will be excited at and start to vibrate or get into resonance is gonna be more or less the same. So that myth is kind of busted as well, I'm sorry, sorry to say. Um, vibration transmission is pretty much the same. There is no inherent molecular damping really in metallic structures, whether it's steel, um, titanium or aluminium, okay? So if you've got the same stiffness, the same mass, you'll get the same note. I mean, that's why you can tune a nylon guitar string and a steel guitar string to the same note in the same octave. You just adjust the stiffness of one relative to the other and the masses will be different. But you can tune those different materials to get the same note at the same octave. So, and the note is just a vibration frequency. So there's nothing mythical about titanium as a material, it's just a different spring constant and a different mass and it happens that when you build a bike with the right tube thicknesses for the strength of the welds and everything that you do actually end up with a frame very similar to the mass of an aluminium frame and the same stiffness. Now if we look at carbon as an example, uh, in that video I did on Young's modulus we looked at carbon fibre and the flexural modulus you get out of carbon fiber when you lay it up into a bike frame. And it's never what is quoted by Torre as the you know tensile modulus because you can't just make a bike frame out of zero degree fibers. And actually we found that when you make a complex layout for a bike frame that can take torsional bending and buckling loads, the Young's modulus or the flexural modulus that you end up with is somewhere in 70 to 80 gigapascal. So not far off aluminium, but obviously that has a much higher specific modulus because it's much lighter. So the specific modulus of carbon, or carbon fiber epoxy laminate, like so a complete laminate, is probably, let's say 80 gigapascals divided by 1.6, which is the density. So that's about 50. And specific modulus for aluminium and titanium is 25 or 26. So it's about double. But do you see frame weights the same in carbon fiber as you would in aluminium or titanium. Well, no, you don't, because you wouldn't accept a carbon fiber frame that had a heavy frame like titanium or aluminium. You would expect the carbon fiber bike to be lower mass. So you can't just say this, the ultimate stiffness of the bike frame in carbon is twice as stiff as titanium, because you expect it, because of that's the way the marketing's gone, to be much lighter. So the weight of the carbon fiber bike is lighter, so therefore the stiffness comes down as well because there's less material in there. That's why, as I stated in that last video, that you don't see carbon bikes like being twice or three times as stiff as other bikes because you basically just wouldn't accept a carbon fiber frame that weighed <laughs> 1,600, 1,800 grams. You just wouldn't accept it. So the stiffness of the carbon is diluted. But I would say that, you know, in general, the stiffness of carbon fiber frames are a step above, probably 30 to 40 cent above an aluminium bike or a titanium bike at the same weight. So actually, we'll just look at the, the numbers to prove that I'm not lying. The top line there is the stiffness of carbon fiber epoxy laminate divided by its density. And then you've got titanium divided by its density. And then the bottom line is aluminium divided by its density. So we've got 50 for the carbon fiber epoxy laminate, which I, again, I must stress is a, an approximate mixed layup. So UD fibers, zero degree plus minus 45 and some woven. And then you've got the uh, titanium specific modulus and the aluminium specific modulus, and they're exactly the same. So if you've got a titanium frame and an aluminium frame that weigh the same amounts with the similar tube profiles, you can deduce their comfort, ride quality and stiffness, vibration frequencies are gonna be almost exactly the same. Now, if your frame builder, who's an expert in titanium, offers you a heavier frame and say, look, if you want a stiff frame, it needs to be around 2,000, 2,300 grams, you can say that frame will be much stiffer than an aluminium frame at 1,500 grams. So. If you're a heavy rider like me, and the chap who owns this bike, we're pretty big guys, if I would actually say this is a light speed T2, I would say the frame is too light and it doesn't feel stiff enough for us. Um, I would say it's a light person's bike because it, this, this bike I think is about 8.3 kilos in this build and it's got old Tegra, the wheels aren't the lightest, um, saddle's not the lightest, so it's not a super light build, but for a disc bike in a big size, that's quite light. And it did occur to me actually that the reason this bike is light is because the frame is light and I would prefer actually a heavier frame and to get some more stiffness out of the frame. 
Um, because if you gave me like an 8.358 size CAD 13, I would say because of the specific modulus, that's not going to be a very stiff bike. Um, it's uh, there's nothing mythical about it. I hope you enjoyed this chat. Uh, I hate to you know break hearts and stuff and destroy fairy tales, but when it comes to stiffness and damping in metallic objects. It doesn't really matter what the object is at the end of the day, it just matters what the E times the I is, and that's going to give you a number. So, buy it on the virtues of it looking great, buy it on the virtues of it being basically more a cottage industry than the bike industry already is anyway, and the fact that you can get cool titanium frames with very custom geometry because it's basically like an old method of making a bike frame, it's welded tubes, so you can do whatever you like with tube lengths. Uh, aluminium bikes are very much now preset in their ways in terms of sizes because all the tubes are hydroformed and custom moulds are built to hydroform the tubes. So it's harder to get a custom geo aluminium bike if you if you don't want straight tubes. Um, but don't buy it on the virtue of it being this wonder material. Anyway, um, cheers. Give us a like and subscribe for more truths. See you in the next one. Hey John, can you put a serial number on that frame? I, I think we need to start putting serial numbers on our uh, products. Um, yeah, just make something up like one, two, three, four, five, six, and and next time make sure you get the two like kind of in line. Uh, maybe have like less beers at lunch before you come and do the stampings because people are gonna fucking laugh at us. Like, yeah, come on, JJP.